today. Okay, so the collaborator of the study the shown here, the uh, Dr. Maeda, Stanford University, and Mr. Date, former student of mine, and the our groups, and the Professor Sugiyama, Osaka University, and Professor Yoichiro Matsumoto, the, uh, Professor Emeritus of the University of Tokyo. So, oops, oops. Oh, 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 it's stuck. Okay, so before talking about bubbles, Bala, happy birthday and congratulations. And the, uh, let me explain what I shown here. Uh, this is birthday cake, so that I put the bigger one. And the, this one, the left side, this is the uh, Japanese way of celebrating 60th anniversary. The, I think the, in India, you have the similar uh, kind of the ceremony that the uh, Professor Kumaran uh, explained yesterday. After the six years, the, you have the uh, first round finished with some the year 60. So in Japan, it is said that if you became 60, it's a first round finished. So you come to the second round. That means you start from the baby. <laughs> and they, to, to celebrate that one, usually they, we prepare, they, it's a traditional system, we prepare the red hat, you know, red clothes, and the, asking them to wear it and celebrating. Okay, so I put your face here. So this is a situation that the, if you are in Japan, you have some sensible, you might have a situation like this. So this is a, our way of celebrating the 60, 60th anniversary birthday, okay? Thank you so, very much. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you very much for the invitation. And this is a very nice opportunity for me to talk about the, the your contribution to my study. Actually, the, uh, the, the ballet is very well known for particular clothes, but he also have the very important contribution to my study for bubbles. And I'm going to talk about the later force and bubble class and phenomena and related phenomena today. So first one, the, uh, I would like to start for the, uh, from our experiment, for my experiment, the upward public channel flow. So the, the bubbles are injected from the bottom of the tank with that bubbles. There is a circulating flow from the bottom to top, so upward flow, even without bubbles. They we inject the bubbles with the, from the needle, about 800 needles, injecting the one millimeter monodispersed bubble from the, the bottom of the tank. And we observe the, the, the bubbly flow at the test section located 1.6 meter above the injection point. And what you see will be the, this situation. In top water, you see the uh, many size of bubbles. Although when they are injected, they, are, they have a mono dispersed size, one millimeter size, which is the similar situation as the, the bottom below. In this situation, because we have some colossus during the writing process, when you observe the bubbly flow at the location 1.6 meter above the injection point, you see for top water, the bigger bubble have a several times collapses. So they have some the, the zigzagging, spiraling motion, complicated motion. If we put the small amount of the, the three pentanol or surfactant, this three pentanol 40 ppm is a kind of the uh, like the uh, one small. Uh, Glass, glass of the, the, the alcohol. So it's like the, the one shot of the alcohol. Then the, 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 the situation becomes totally different. So you see that there's a bubble cluster coming out. And the size, bubble sites are kept monodispersed. The reason why you have the, the, the bubble size becomes nearly constant is because the small amount of surfactant inhibit the colossus of the bubbles. So the, the, the bubble keeps the same size 
uh, as they injected. So, but not only that, you see that the bubble cluster occurred. So why you, we have bubble cluster here? Then the, instead of the, just one shot of the 3 pentano 40 ppm, if we have a 160 ppm in that four shot, so four times more surfactant and alcohol, more drunken, bubbly flow, then you don't see the clustering. Okay, so there is the different stage. If you don't have alcohol, you have this the, the bubbly tap water. So if you have certain amount of the alcohol, slightly drunken, you see the clustering. Uh, more heavily drunken, then the cluster disappeared. So what could be what happened in, in this situation? Okay, that's the uh, we've been working on for a long time. So the uh, if you conduct some okay, this is the experiment for single bubble. Okay, single bubble in the question liquid. So no flow for this experiment. Nearly the same size bubbles, but the terminal velocity is totally different because of the well-known phenomenon that the contaminated water, uh, the, the bubble has a much lower velocity. So uh, from super purified water, uh, tap water, and with surfactant, you see the drastic reduction of the rising velocity. And the, it is often said, it was often said that the, the tap water in our the building it's very dirty. So you should not think the, the tap water, but it actually, if you look at the terminal velocity bubbles, it's quite close to the, the super purified water. So it, it was not such a bad situation I ex expected. And you can see that the, the, the rising velocity can be the indicator for how the, the, the water is contaminated, how much we have the contamination of the water, okay? So you see that the 100 pentanol, 160 pentanol, like the, the one when we don't have the cluster, the terminal velocity is much lower than the super purified system. So tap water and the 40 ppm, you see the cluster is between the 20 and 60. So it's an intermediate contaminated level compared with the highly contaminated. So if you look at the, we look at the terminal velocity and we look at the drug coefficient of the, the each bubbles, we can clearly see the, the, uh, the bubbles in the uh, super purified system. We have the much smaller drug coefficient, which is close to the solid line that's corresponding to the, 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 the uh, clean bubble system. This is a result for the numerical simulation with the, uh, the boundary control of the tangential free stress on the bubble surface. This is a dot line corresponding to the, the drug coefficient for the rigid sphere. So if your water is contaminated for the, the 160 uh, uh, ppm triton, uh, no, three pentanol or the just the two ppm triton X100, you see that the, uh, the, the terminal velocity is very close, it's nearly the same as the rigid sphere, the, the drug coefficient. Okay, so the, 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 for the current stage, we have like 40 ppm cluster occurred when you have the 40 ppm level of contaminant that's corresponding to around this region, okay, this region. If your bubble is more contaminated, then the terminal velocity becomes smaller and the, the drug coefficients come close to the that of the solid sphere, okay? And the, you don't see the cluster when the, the bubble terminal velocity becomes lower. Okay, so you see that. So three pentanol, 40 ppm, three pentanol, 160 ppm, and triton X100, two ppm, just a very tiny amount of the the Triton X100 can drastically change the, the flow structure. So we see now that for the uh, 3 pentanol 160 and Triton X100 cases, when we don't have the cluster, 
then the terminal velocity is close to uh, the, the drag coefficient for these two are close to the, the that of solid sphere, so non slip particle. So it's like small ping pong ball. For slip at 40 ppm, this is the intermediate region that they not super purified, but not fully contaminated. It's a, between that. Then the, the, there's a huge, uh, there's important contribution from the Bala, Bagachanda Bala 2002. There is a, not only the, the, the drug coefficient, also the lift coefficient, shear induced lift force can be totally different between the clean bubble and contaminated bubbles. So the, for example, if you have a shear flow, the, the spherical particle or the spherical bubble uh, might be the positive lift force in the higher velocity direction. That's positive mean the, uh, from the, the low Reynolds number limit. There's a well-known Sachman lift force that's the, in this direction. There's also the, for the, the irrotational, uh, uh, weekly rotational flow. So the, 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 the potential flow plus small Vortex effect, weekly rotational flow, there's an analytical solution obtained by Oton. So for Oton, with this formula, the uh, lift coefficient is 0.5, so that's finite amplitude. So the both had a positive direction. But Bala, uh, Bagjan Bala Chanda showed that uh, in case of the solid sphere, for the Reynolds number around like 50 to Several hundred, there is a negative lift close to zero, but there's a negative lift can occur. So there, there's, there's even the sign of the lift force can be changed if you have a solid sphere. So going back to this situation, as I show here, so clean bubble to the contaminate bubble, there's a situation for the clean bubble to the solid sphere, if your bubble contaminated, they behave like solid sphere for the drug coefficient. So you can easily imagine that the, the surface is becomes immobile. So you can also imagine that in that situation, there can be the negative lift force for the contaminated bubble if it is spherical shape. And we can check it. Uh, this one, or maybe we can just, just keep this one. So by looking at the trajectory of one bubble in the Poiseuille flow, we can check it. So just releasing the bubble in the shear flow, we can check the trajectory that I just skipped the movie. So uh, looking at the trajectory for tap water, you, you might see that this is small bubbles bouncing on the wall for the slightly contaminated one. The bubble move along the wall and for the Triton X100, they don't have the lift force and they don't migrate. So if you look at the trajectory, you can clearly see, you cannot clearly capture the negative lift force, but you can clearly see for the non-contaminated or slightly contaminated system, the bubble migrate toward the wall because of the shear in the lift force. But if they become more contaminated, they be, behave like solid particle and bubble does not move to the, the wall. And the, even the, you might see that there's a opposite direction motion for the uh, Triton X100. So for the turbulent flow, this is for the laminar flow. So the repeatable for turbulent flow is the same. What is different is that because of the fluctuation, they, the trajectory is a more the random process, but you can clearly see if the bubbles are once captured on the wall, they cannot escape from the wall. Okay, they just follow. And for this is 
the, the three pentagon for 160 ppm, you see that they don't come to the wall. This is the wall addition, okay? So in the shear flow, this is the, the center of the channel is a zero. And so this is the uh, y equal 20, the wall, and y equal zero is the cent uh, center of the channel. So the, the bubbles are released the, uh, in the middle of the, the wall and the center of the channel. They don't migrate toward the wall. Okay, so the, the more contaminated, they don't feel the lift force and they don't come to the wall. So this graph for the uh, clean bubble, the Lujando and Manuri got the uh, New Mexico City result that show the good agreement with the auto lift force in the parameter range of the current experiment condition. Okay, in the current content experiment condition, depending on the contaminant level, the terminal velocity random number is from 50 to 300. Okay. This is a region. But for the, the contaminant one, we have totally different situation and that's clearly reflecting this phenomena. And if you look at the, the, the bubble accumulation near the wall, if you look at from the side, for three beta 40 ppm, you can see this is transparent. You see the more white color here. And you don't see it's a more darker here for bottom two figures. That's because for the upper one, three beta 40 ppm, you the bubbles, many bubbles are coming toward the, along, coming toward the wall. And there's a accumulation of the bubbles, you can see near the wall around here. But for the bottom two, they don't have the tendency for accumulating the, you know, near the wall. And the bubble clusters appeared very close to the wall, okay? And you can confirm that through the you make a simulation for 3D cases with the uh, boundary physical coordinate system with the adsorption desorption kinetics for the surfactant and with shear flow. So what we can see is the, the LA corresponding to the Langmuir number. So Langmuir, small Langmuir number corresponding to the, the situation of clean bubble and larger Langmuir number corresponding to the, the contaminated bubble. So if you change the Langmuir number, you see that the drug coefficient becomes from the clean bubble to the solid sphere. Same for the lift force from the clean bubble to the solid sphere obtained by the, the Bala, Bhagavan Balachanda. Okay, and what is interesting here is for the drug coefficient, the viscous stress and the pressure stress, the pressure distribution contribute the same amount for the total drug. But for the lift force, Viscous force doesn't contribute for the lift force. And viscous force, viscous stress, I mean, viscous stress contribute for the negative lift force. Okay. So this is also the, the you can easily imagine that the lift force is the inertia effect because low, uh, zero Raynaud number stocks flow, spherical particle in the shear force, or spherical bubble in the shear force, there's no lift force because of the kinematic reversibility of the stocks flow. Okay, but the, uh, the, so the, the, this contribution for the lift force only given by the pressure reflecting that the, the inertia is important for the lift force for the positive lift force, but that is not for the negative lift force. Okay, so this is even for these two figures, the pressure, uh, viscous stress, which both are important for drug, but Pressure would be important for the positive lift. That's a very interesting fluid mechanical problem. So what we can see is the, uh, the uh, there is a certain condition that you have clustering phenomena. If it is, it is uh, tap water, you have the clusters, so you don't see the cluster. 
So you need to have certain amount of the contamination for the inhibition of the clusters. But if you put more contaminant, more surfactant, more contaminated, then the, the cluster disappeared because bubble doesn't migrate toward the wall. So bubble cluster appeared near the wall. And this bubble cluster near the wall gives the drastic change to the bubbly flow. So if you have a, the cluster, if cluster appears, then the, the huge reduction of the renal number, renal, renal stress, huge reduction of the renal stress occurs. If you have, you have a single phase or you have a, a highly contaminated situation with that bubble clusters, the renal stress distribution is quite similar. Okay, so the only the case when you have a bubble cluster near the wall, you have a huge reduction of the, the, the rain stress. That is given by the, uh, I just skip the, the, the measurement part due to the lack, uh, time limitation. Uh, using the, the SSPIB, stereoscopic, the, the, the PIB. The, the, these are the contour for the vertical structure without bubble injection. The, there's a vertical structure appeared in the channel flow. I show you the, after bubble injected, okay, still, but cluster coming out. Then here you see the, the disappearing, this is the, uh, uh, bubble are injected on the this side, and you see that the, when the bubble cluster, let me try once more. When the bubble cluster coming out, then the, there's a disappearance of the, the vertical structure. Okay, let me check. So still you see the vertical structure, then the bubble are coming, still okay, but the cluster coming out, okay. Then the vertical structure disappears, so it's like, close to like laminarization, laminarize. And the, the, this effect continues for a while. So you don't have to continuously inject in bubbles. If you have a one shot, they sweep the, along the wall and they kill the, the tiny vertex ring close to the wall. And they, that's the origin of the large scale vertical structure. So instead of the killing the large scale vertical structure, they are sweeping the small, the tiny baby of the, the vertical structure and the, that effect lasts quite a long time if you have just one shot of the, the bubble injection, okay? And the final one that I just would like to uh, briefly show the, the, our recent study. So the, the, this phenomena can be estimated using some simple model for the bubble-bubble interaction. The, the Halles and Lujando gave some interaction for two bubble location and integrating the, 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 the ordinary differential equation, you can see the trajectory. There's an interesting phenomena that if you have a leading bubble, you might expect that the trailing bubble will be attracted to the leading bubble because of the wake effect. If it is a particle, you have that kind of situation. But if you have a bubbles, because bubbles have some wake, particles also have a wake, but in case of bubbles, this wake have a velocity gradient that gives you the uh, shear induced lift force for the out, outward, the, the wake region. In case of the particle, as a balance showed, there will not be the lift of force coming from the uh, shear uh, induced, induced shear in the wake. But in case of bubbles, because of the, the velocity gradient in the wake, the bubbles will be kicked out from the wake region, except that the trailing bubble is exactly on the axis along the line, but that will not be happening yet. The ER experiment. So the the bubbles are very easy to be kicked out, and the, you can estimate this kind of the phenomena by calculating the interaction. And I think I don't have enough time, so I could just skip this, skip this one. So we can 
confirm that. So when I found this clustering, I explained that the, the trading bubble will be sucked to the leading bubbles and they have the inline the clustering first, then they accumulate because of the, the bubbles are constrained in the 2D plane, but that was not the, the correct the story. The correct story is the, uh, the, the, the trading bubbles, the lower location becomes unstable, so that they will be kicked out and the side-by-side -side location occurs first, then the, side, the horizontal cluster will be piling up to see the, to show the bubble cluster, okay? Okay, so I think we are going right. So the, the five, uh, this is summary. So the important part from the Ballard's contribution is the uh, highly contaminated bubbles it does not feel the uh, uh, positive lift force. And so they don't migrate to the wall. So the, the, uh, that's important finding. And the, the more detailed analysis you can see here and the, 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 the latest one is just published recently, 2021. That's the uh, more detailed analysis for the pairwise interaction I showed the, at the, the last part of my talk. So finally, again, happy birthday, Bala. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor, uh, for a very interesting and exciting talk. Now we have room for a few questions from the audience. Um, maybe I will start. Uh, um, sure. Shu, um, toward the end when you showed the simultaneously vortex structures and the bubble concentration. Um, so in a way, uh, this is the some mechanistic view of micro bubble drag reduction. It's related to that, right? Uh, uh, yes, basically the the drug reduction can occur not necessarily in micro bubbles. Even the one millimeter size bubble, you, you have the drug reduction. But the, the basically, the, in case of the, the drug reaction of the ship, it's horizontal, horizontal. In our experiment, it's a vertical one. But even for the horizontal one, the, there is a bubble sheet near the wall. Mm -hmm. And the, the, move, the bubble moving along the wall cue mm -hmm. the origin of the uh, large vertical structure that is this tiny vertex ring near the wall that is the origin of the large scale. So there's basically the, the bubble sweep the structure. So the, 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 the final mechanism will be similar situation that the bubbles sweep, sweep away, actually. I think that's the scenario of that one. Yes, I think uh, Professor Mahesh Panchatul has a yeah. question. Yes. Hello, Professor Takagi, I just had a yes. quick question for you. Yes. What is the physical mechanism for the reduction in CD for tiny amounts of the surfactant? What is the... Uh, uh, there's a, you're, you're not yes, altering the yes. viscosity of the surrounding I, fluid. I, so, yes, uh, there's a the simulation part. That's basically Marangoni effect coming from the, the, the surfactant. If you have a surfactant absorbed on the free surface, the surface tension reduction occurred. So if you're rising bubbles, there's accumulation of the, the surfactant at the bottom part, rear part of the bubbles, that has a lower surface tension, gives the Malangoni force upward. And the, there's a simulation part, I didn't have time to explain, but there's a the simulation part, the, 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 the conducting simulation, you can clearly, you, you can get the good agreement with the experiment observation by con concerning the Malangoni effect. Do you see a change in the shape of the bubble as a result for the, of the for this for this parameter condition the the surface tension reduction is very small uh, order of the percentage uh, several percentage percent so they basically the, the the shape doesn't change a lot but because okay. of the gradient gradient of the surface tension give the sufficient amount of the Marangoni effect okay very interesting thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. 